Gabby Nordstrom is an up-and-coming journalist covering the Devils for Jersey Sporting News. So I invited her onto the show to get her insight as to how this past season has gone for the Devils and her expectations going into the new year. Gabby, once again, had some great things to share. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode with Gabby. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play -play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential MIA member, Trey Matthews. I am joined alongside Gabby Nordstrom. She is a journalist for Jersey Sporting News covering the New Jersey Devils. Gabby, I've seen your name in the Zoom press conferences, but this is the first time that we formally met. So before we get things off, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm happy to be here. All right. So let's start off with the first question. So I presume you've been around the rock quite frequently. You've seen this team play on uh, TV this past year. Very historical season. Let me get your uh, overall thoughts on the matter, because one of the main questions I've been asking some of my more recent guests is that was this season success? What made it successful? I just want to uh, pick your brain in that regard. So do you mind sharing? Yeah, of course. So first of all, I think the season was just fun. I thought it was very just every game, even if like the games we lost, it was still enjoyable to go to because it's not it wasn't often for us to get blown out by teams. If anything, we were blowing out teams. So, um, yeah, it was super fun um, this season or well, last season, I should say. Um, I wasn't covering anyone, so I was pretty much just a fan watching so from a fan's point of view it was fun to just go to the games like interact with fans my family has season tickets so i was there pretty often um like the win streak that we had i was there for probably half the home games like it was just so fun um i think this was a very successful season and I hate the people that are like, well, you guys, you lost in the second round. How is that successful? Like Stanley Cup is his success. And I'm like, that's not true at all, in my opinion, because we were hoping to be a playoff team this year. And we made we beat the Rangers, which is a win in itself. And then we made it to the second round. So it's like, how can you say it wasn't a success? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've been seeing a lot of like Rangers discourse on Twitter saying like, can we just admit that the Rangers are better than the Devils? And I'm just like, the Devils beat the Rangers fair and square in seven games in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And I think the biggest narrative for the Devils was that a lot of people were doubting them going into the year because I think a lot of people had a lot of question marks in regards to how the Metro would form because I think the two giveaways in terms of uh, potentially being playoff teams were obviously the New York Rangers and also the Carolina Hurricanes. But mm. I think people had a little bit of trouble just trying to determine how the rest of the Metro would shake up, especially in the middle tier, because once again, people were penciling in the Rangers and Hurricanes. And towards the bottom tier, people were saying the Flyers. And then I said, I felt as though the Blue Jackets were very overhyped because I said, yeah. yes, they got Johnny Goodrow, but there's still a, a big question mark, which is, their experience because they were mm -hmm. one of if not the youngest team in the nhl and i w i was saying this not because i was bitter because obviously uh, <laughs> I, I was kind of bummed that the devils missed out on johnny goodrow but i was just saying like the devils were one time the youngest team in the nhl not too long ago and what happens those young guys hit a wall so mm -hmm. you know uh we we established that you're a journalist we established that you were there as a fan. And I just want to say that it doesn't matter if you are if you have a credential or not. Everyone's a fan at the end of the day. And we see it from all, all sorts of shapes, sizes. So I, honestly, um, I love interacting with, uh, with the fan base while I'm at the Prudential Center if I have some time. Because at the end of the day, we're all covering a team that we absolutely enjoy watching. So uh, we all start somewhere. And 
it doesn't matter if you're in the grandstands, doesn't matter if you're near the glass, it doesn't matter if you're in the press box, doesn't matter what the case is, we are all connected with our uh, fandom of a specific team. So, But it kind of leads into my next uh, talking point, which is I talked about my expectations for the rest of the Metro going into the season. What were your, what were your anticipations for the devils? Like, where did you think that they would finish? Going into last season? Correct. So I thought that they would end up in a wild card spot, whether it was first or second, didn't really matter to me. I just kind of assumed that would be where they would end up. So they definitely, blew out my expectations never would have expected them to create devil's history never would have expected a 13 win streak like definitely blew everything out of the park for me yeah so I I think it was surprising that the devils go on a 13 game win streak they're first in the metro at a couple points during the season they clinch a playoff spot and they were able to amount a two nothing comeback against the rangers so it was definitely uh, impressive to see. And um, my, I, I, I've asked a lot of people this question, and your answer is probably going to be the same. But if you look at MVP for the team, who would you say was that MVP caliber player? And don't be afraid to not pick the popular answer. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like that's kind of hard to answer because obviously Jack Hughes was amazing the entire season. But then it's like, there's Nico, who's the backbone of the team. There's Vitek, who fixed our goalie situation for the regular season. So it's like, yeah, Jack obviously lit up the rock this season. But, like, everyone else, there was a few important players the entire season. Don't worry. There's still more in store with Gabby Nordstrom. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about FanDuel. So football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long because right now when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use bonus bets on spreads, player props, over and unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Take some time to visit FanDuel and include money lines, props, et cetera, around your team. All right, let's get back to our conversation with Gabby Nordstrom of Jersey Sporting News. Take it away. Yeah, so if you had to choose one of them, just just like just choose one, which one would you choose? So you listed some names, Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Vitek Vanacek. I know it's difficult, but if you just had to choose one, who would it be? I think I have to pick Jack. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, surprising. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what is surprising. Uh, EA Sports uh, revealing that. Uh, I know. That Kale is going to be on the cover of the of the video game. And I was really hoping it was going to be Jack Hughes because he's young. He's eccentric. Yeah. He's the next big thing. He uh, led this Devils team to such a historical run. So I don't know if you play video games or not, but I don't, but I, I kept up with it. I, yeah, saw it. I was just really hoping it was going to be Jack Hughes, but I think what he has going against him is that he's not really, he could be marketable, but he doesn't yeah. really present himself in that sort of way. Yeah. He's really focused on hockey, which I, ex- I respect, but at the same time, don't be afraid to dip your <laughs> toe into like some, other media outlets like video games, because I think a Jack Hughes cover will, will do a lot of good for the devils. Cause I think he'd be the first devils player since Martin Brodeur to be on the cover of a video game. Yeah, I, sounds but, right. Yeah. I go back to shell 14, but you know, we're not here to talk about video games. <laughs> Let's talk about an X factor player that you have for the Devils. So someone who wasn't exactly an MVP, but someone who still got their roses, someone who was definitely a a big help in which the Devils were able to uh, amount this incredible season. If you had to pick one X Factor player, who would it be and why? I might go with Dawson Mercer. And the only reason I'm saying that is because he's such a young player and he showed so much skill this season that like I wasn't expecting him to like be that good um and there were like instances in the season where you were like wow like he can like 
be a superstar for this team in the future. So I really think like those times when he was on it, like he was consistently a good player, but there were times where like he was our best player for spans of games. So I feel like it would be him for me at least. Yeah, I mean, for Mercer, I think what he needed was just a chance to really showcase his skill set because early on in the year, he was a bottom six player. And yeah. I'd say he was paired alongside with the likes of someone like Yegor or Sharon Govich, which yeah. no disrespect to Sharon Govich, but <laughs> Sharon Govich is not exactly going to make the people around him better. But yeah. once Mercer latched on to the Heesher and Tatar line, we saw them be one of the most dominant lines especially in the month of what January and February yeah. for the devils. And uh, once Timo Meyer was added to this roster, you couldn't separate Mercer, Tatar and he despite he and Meyer's past history mm -hmm. of representing their respective country on a national scale. So Mercer in my eyes is definitely an underrated asset mm -hmm. for this team because we're talking a lot about Hughes. We're talking a lot about Heesher. We're talking a lot about Brett. But going into next season, I think a lot of people aren't really give is aren't really giving Dawson Mercer uh, the the credit that he deserves because he can definitely be a dynamic force for this team. And yeah. it's not just him. You got people like Timo Meyer, Eric Holla, and it's just and Tyler Toffoli is now added to this <laughs> roster. So. It's just amazing that the Devils have so many weapons on their top six and getting someone like or having someone like Mercer and just blossom into the player he is. This Devils team is really set for the future. And something I talked with Christy Flannery of the Hockey News quite extensively, which is depth is so crucial for any championship caliber team. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Devils are so young, they have a lot of these players locked up for a long period of time. I think uh, th this Devils team is definitely primed to take a couple steps forward because um, I, I saw that Tom Fitzgerald was on a on a podcast recently, Spitting Chicklets, and yeah. when asked about how this team is formed, he related it to the 2011 Bruins, which was that championship team. Because the thing is, is like Meyer could have demanded for like ten or eleven million dollars, yeah. or we know that Hughes and Heischer are are underpaid because the devils re-signed them to the, to the right time before they really took strides forward. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of other key assets signed for a few more years. So Fitzgerald has done a, an excellent job of just trying to make sure that the financial situation is worked out, but at the same time, having his assets around for a few years. So that way it's not like, championship or bust because let's say the devils only have a bunch of one-year contracts it completely flops yeah and now they're kind of in a very unpeculiar uh, predicament so yeah. let's move on from mvps and x factors let's talk about an an unsung hero so someone who doesn't get their roses but someone who is really good still but once again won't get the attention that they deserve so who's that unsung hero for you I'm a huge Siegenthaler fan because I I like the Capitals. I follow them. So I knew about him like before he came to the Devils. Um, so when he did end up coming here, I was very excited because I knew that he was a strong defenseman. And at that time, I felt that we were really struggling with defensive defensemen. Um, so I feel like he was just always there. Like no matter what, he was doing the right thing. He was – checking at the right time he was using his stick at the right time like he's just so smart i just I, he i just don't know i feel like he's perfect for that yeah so devils are definitely no strangers to uh defensive minded defensemen because i literally spoke to uh ken danico just uh last week and we all know what he was able to do <laughs> during those three stanley cup uh runs and uh, that's why he's nicknamed Mr. Uh, Devil, and he and he holds the record for most games played uh, with this uh, with this organization. So, um, yeah, the Devils definitely know how to develop defensemen in a unique way. Because if we look at the line pairings, Siegenthaler and Hamilton. Hamilton is the offensive minded defenseman, but Siegenthaler is a stay at home defenseman. Then mm -hmm. the next line, Luke Hughes is going to produce 
the offense. And then mm-hmm. John Marino is going to be that stay-at-home defenseman. And then when we look at that possible projected third pairing, Kevin Ball and Colin Miller, question mark. Colin Miller, capable of producing offense, not his bread and butter, but between him and Kevin Ball, I would definitely uh, put my money on Miller to be providing some of that offensive uh, spark for the Devils. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, the Devils just have a unique way of just uh, incorporating these defensive-minded defensemen. So uh, I know you've been involved on these Zoom press conferences from uh, the beginning of the Mm. offseason. What has impressed you during these conferences? Like, is there any particular soundbite that sticks out to you? I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but it's just like, you know, on this show, I like to uh, incorporate some of the questions that I, that I asked a, a player or maybe Tom Fitzgerald and just say, like, this is what I think. This is what I was impressed by. So off the top of your head, of all the press conferences you've been to covering the Devils for Jersey Sporting News, what has really stuck out to you during this offseason? I wouldn't say it's something that like impresses me, but like Timo, uh, Mikey, Nate, everyone that signed extensions, they were all like, I want to be here. And I feel like being a Devils fan for so long, that bad stretch of years, that's so refreshing to hear. Like people actually want to be in New Jersey. And that's just, I feel like that's huge for Devils fans, the players, the coaches, just like everyone involved in the Devils, I feel like players actually saying that out loud is just so important. So I'd say just hearing that, it's just music to my ears. So I want to ask you something. Someone like Mm -hmm. Connor Hellebuck is Mm -hmm. possibly available via a trade, and he says it's rumored that one of his preferred destinations is in fact New Jersey, or you see someone like Colin Miller who said he was stunned when he was traded, but he was glad that he was traded to the Devils, or uh, Tomas Nosek. He talked to Patrick Elias, his mm. fellow uh, Czech native, and was just like, should I sign with with the Devils? And Patrick persuaded him into doing so. So, yeah, it's just, like, really uh, interesting that a lot of these players actually want to come to New Jersey. Mm. And even Travis Green, who's now uh, uh, an assistant coach uh, with Lindy Ruff's staff, he said he wanted to uh, sign with the uh, Devils and join uh, the coaching staff because I think one of his options was, in fact, Calgary and, and another team, but I can't uh, think of it off the top of my head. So um, w- what does it mean just hearing that, uh, like, you talked about players that the Devils were able to retain, but do you think, like, this sort of sets a precedent for, like, potential players who might be available via trade or free agency whatever the case might be, does it set that precedent for them to come over to New Jersey? Yeah, I feel like, especially a name like Timo Meyer, like he's a big league name. I feel like him saying that is probably the most important. Same like when Dougie signed here, that was a huge thing for the Devils. I feel like that was kind of the turning point for free agents and people to come here. But um, I feel like, when people, people used to just hate on New Jersey. They didn't want to come here. They wanted to leave when they were here. So it's like now that people actually want to stay here and they want to come here and they don't have to be like heavily persuaded to come here. They don't need to ask for millions of dollars to come here or to stay here. Like people are taking um, like cuts from their salary to stay here. Like they're just not. New Jersey's name looks a lot better now than it did in years before. Speaking of which, what was your favorite offseason uh, ac- acquisition? So uh, obviously ty- the Tyler Toffoli deal came out of left field, but I've been talking with a few of my colleagues. I really like Colin Miller. I think he's very underrated. So if you had to pick an offseason move that the Devils have made mm-hmm. so far, what was your favorite? I do like the Toffoli or trade, um, but can signing like extensions work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I am a very big fan of Bastion and McLeod because I just think they're like the perfect fourth line role players. So 
seeing them being extended really like it made me happy because I feel like fourth liners are not easy to come across like good solid fourth liners like you're not just gonna pick one out of the bunch like so I feel like that sign or those two signings and extensions I feel like that helps the Devils a lot more than people actually think it does yeah so leading into the new year what are your expectations for this team like it's hard to top off a historical season but at the same time I think fans will be a little forgiving if the Devils are still a playoff team because if the Devils win like 45 to 50 I think fans will be like okay that's that's still that's fine as long as, you're still, as long as you're still uh, one of the top teams in the Metro. Yeah. So want to hear your thoughts, expectations going into the new year. Um, yeah, kind of what you just said. I expect still top three team in the Metro. Um, I'd like to be ahead of the Rangers, but obviously like things happen. That's not like, oh my God, if we're not ahead of the Rangers in points, season was a bust, season was a fail. Like, no, that's not how it works. But um. Yeah, obviously, I'd love for them to be first in the Metro, but the Hurricanes are a very stacked team, so I don't see that happening. So I would just say, like you said, around like 45, 50 wins, that would be ideal. If they go above that, amazing. It's wonderful. But if they don't, I'm perfectly fine with 45, 50. All right, so you've been you've been writing for Jersey Sporting News not too long, but you've put out some great articles. So, like, uh, tell my audience what you've been like writing about, what's been interesting you about uh, this Devils team. Like, what can we expect when we click on one of your articles when Jersey Sporting News tweets it out? Yes. Yeah, so, um, just recently, I actually put out an article about like my expectations for the forward group. So that's kind of what I've been working on recently um, is just expectations for the season. So soon an article about like defensive expectations and then the goalie expectations will be out. So sometimes I just do like little quick write-ups on like signings and stuff like that. So it kind of just depends which one you're clicking on. Some are very like personal opinion and then some are literally just – Timo signed this contract today for this much amount of money, blah, blah, blah. So it kind of just depends which one you click on. Awesome. So where can my uh, audience find you at? Um, you can find me on Twitter at that Gabby underscore Nordstrom. Um, I pretty much post any sort of writing on there. And then my Instagram is at Gabby period Nordstrom. Um, Sometimes I post my stories on there, not always. And then if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, all my stories go on there too. Uh, I, so it's just Gabrielle Nordstrom, I think. I don't really know how LinkedIn usernames work. But yeah, everything is on Twitter. Or if you go on the Jersey Sporting News website, you could go to authors and then you could just look at all of the stories on there. Awesome. So, Gabby, thank you for taking the time to join me on today's episode of Locked on Devils. And like I do to close out every show, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Gabby, thanks once again. Thank you for having me.